In this video, we're going to go over how to create a four field plan. I'm going to assume that you've already seen the APPA in the three field video, so I'm going to kind of zoom through the uh, plan creation and field creation process. Okay, for this case, we're going to use a 5 millimeter margin around our PDV. Okay, so we have our four fields. It's called a four field box technique or four field, standard four field technique. Um, because we have our AP beam, our AP beam, our PA beam, our right lat, and our left lat all equally spaced, all with the same margin. We'll do 300 times 10 for this example. And for this case, with our four fields, let's try to do a little bit better than 95% coverage. We'll do 97. And calculate. Okay, you can see here that our plan is getting more and more conformal the more beams we add if you compare this to our APPA video or the three field videos um, we get this nice conformal shape it's very homogeneous very symmetrical because we have a symmetrical beam di um, distribution what you can do is definitely play with your weighting in order to get the distribution that you want Maybe you want more coming from your lateral beams in order to spare your rectum and bladder better. Maybe um, your top priority is rectum, so you would scale your other three beams, your AP and your laterals, more than your PA to get, get dose out of your rectum. Whatever the case may be, um, you can certainly do that. What I want to do, though, is see just how good a coverage we can get. So even at 99.5% coverage, our uh, max dose is 106.5. So what that tells me is that we can probably decrease our margins. So we went with a 0.5 CM margin. Let me get rid of these dose clouds. I'm going to leave that 107 on. I'm going to turn it to a segment. I'm going to leave this one on because in the end, what my goal is for 3D plans, most 3D plans, is to get my hotspot below 107. So eventually we're going to have to use that to, to create our field and fields. So we went with the 0.5 CM margin. Let's decrease that to Okay, you can see with that decreased margin, it's having a lot harder time covering that target to such good to such good coverage. So let's back off a little bit. We probably don't need 99.5% 
on our PTV. Let's try 97. So 97, our 107 is breaking up a little bit. Let's take a look at some of these other angles. I'm going to turn that volume off. So the only problem with something like this is you can see that 107, it's all very central. There's nothing really along the edge in all these uh, beams I've used. So we can do a couple things. I can tell that the, the weighting is skewed a little bit posteriorly, so I can lock our lateral beams, so F2 and 4 and take a little bit away from the posterior beam. Whoops, it's the wrong beam. I need F3. F3 is our posterior beam. 24. I'd even that out a little bit. Um, left and right is fairly close. so. I just don't feel that we can really use field and fields to cool this down. Um, let's do 96.5. There we go. So now it's starting to break up. So let's try let's try this. What I'm also going to do while I have this open is you can see it's normalizing based on a scale of four since we have four beams. Let's turn that. One. Whoops. I need to unlock these first. Now I can do it. Okay. So let's pick a beam to create some field and fields for. So just looking at all these uh, fields, I probably don't want to pick F1 or F3 because you can see in this projection or from this view the 107 is covering a large percentage of that field compared to F2 and 4. So basically the amount we have to block with our field and field MLCs is going to be less which is what we want. So I'm going to create a field and field for F2. I'm going to try blocking this 107 from our X1 side. I'm going to get this from our X2 side. Add 3%. Let's see what happens. You can see that 107 shrink considerably, so that's good. You can move on to the other side, which is F4. Sometimes when the uh, cloud I'm trying to block gets so small, I'll just manually manipulate these. Let's try that. Okay, so so what ends up happening sometimes is just a little, just a second ago, all of our 107 was up up higher. See that, and then when we block that, some bounces back here, and that just has to do with. Uh, with uh, you know scatter and it sometimes has to very slightly normalize um, differently to maintain this coverage which will change your isotopes distribution so when it does that and it's very small amounts like that before I create a new field and field I'll go look at my previous ones to see if I can make some just very minor changes in order to block those areas and in this case I can so our point max dose is right there, so I'm going to 
barely move that one over. I'm going to move that a little bit and that a little bit to try to cover those those areas of 107. You can see the 107 is all gone. I could try to get that to go away and get it actually below 107, but I think it's probably okay. Um, but that's this is just a good example. It shows you by adding more fields, the more fields we add, the more conformal we can get, and the tighter we can can make these uh, these margins around our volumes, which is good because then we end up treating less normal tissue. To finish this plan up, I would merge my subfields. And we are done.